The Wrath of God versus the Power of Satan. Interesting little study here. You can turn your Bible to 2 Chronicles, back in the Old Testament, 2 Chronicles chapter 36, the last chapter in the book of 2 Chronicles. And uh, what's this study about? This study is another proof of why I believe that post-tribbers, militant, hardcore post-tribbers, not brand new believers, as I've said uh, in my study, a lot of people just didn't watch the study apparently, and they're saying somebody that's, you know, deceived on the post-trib thing early on, that they, I'm saying that they're not saved or something like that. I didn't say that. Okay, I said that, you know, towards the end of the study, I said if you're confused about the issue, maybe you're confused or whatever else. All right, people seem to have selective hearing when they listen to me preaching. Typical. But uh, I'm going to tell you a reason why, another reason why I believe that hardcore militant post-tribbers are lost. Um, they believe that the power of Satan is greater than the wrath of God. See, I look at the future as a Bible-believing Christian, and I say, it's God's wrath and judgment that's coming. They say, no, it's actually Satan's power that's coming. The great tribulation there. No such title exists in the entire King James Bible. The great tribulation is not a title. There will be great tribulation immediately after the tribulation of those days. It's a description. But see, they've set up a phony system where they'll, they'll squabble about pre-tribulation rapture. The word rapture is not in the Bible. How about the word tribulation in terms of a title for this coming time period? But see, they can't use the real, the, the real title for that time because it totally debunks the thing that any Christian is going to be in there because it's called the time of Jacob's trouble in Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 7. And in all, the book of Daniel, it talks about Daniel's 70th week. See, 70 weeks are determined upon thy people. Talks about in the book of Daniel. For Jews. The whole thing is about the Jews. It's about the nation of Israel. They've rejected Jesus Christ as their Messiah. Therefore, God's judgment and wrath is going to come upon them. It doesn't come upon the church. But you see, if you're a post-tribber, oh no, we are somehow special enough to deserve God's judgment and wrath to come down upon us. See? But they, of course, they don't really believe that. They say, well, no, it's actually just it's, it's tribulation from the devil. You see, the Illuminati is getting stronger, the Council on Foreign Relations, the Jesuits, the, the Vatican, the Bilderbergers, the whoever, all these international, the Rothschilds, and the, they're getting stronger and stronger. They're going to have a new world order. And the Antichrist is going to rise and he's going to kill Christians and whatever else. You see, they believe the power of Satan is greater than the judgment of God. It's the judgment of God from the very beginning, the whole way to the end. The first seal is opened by Jesus Christ and he unleashes the Antichrist. Okay, but I'm going to show you some interesting scriptures here, talking about when the wrath of God comes and the judgment of the Lord and who it comes upon. Second Chronicles chapter 36, verse 11. Let's start there. Zedekiah was one and twenty years old when he began to reign and reigned eleven years in Jerusalem. And he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord his God and humbled not himself before Jer Jeremiah the prophet, speaking from the mouth of the Lord. Preachers will speak from the mouth of the Lord when they line up with this book. Verse 13, And he also rebelled against King Nebuchadnezzar, who had made him swear by God, but he stiffened his neck and hardened his heart from turning unto the Lord God of Israel. God raised up King Nebuchadnezzar. God raises up wicked rulers. Why? To judge people. He did it back here in the Old Testament with the nation of Israel, and he's doing it today with the nation of America. And most of the other nations as well. God raises up wicked rulers. Why? Because the people are wicked. That's one of the ways that God punishes. Um, it isn't some kind of a play-by-play -play the Lord does there in the book of Revelation. Jesus kind of sheepishly, you know, meekly goes and he opens a seal up to see what bad things the devil's doing on the earth. No, he opens the seal up and says, okay, Antichrist, go. He's opening the seal and telling them to go out. Jesus Christ is in control of the whole thing. Unless you're a postie, you see. Then you serve some kind of a weird false god that puts judgment on people that are righteous. Kind of strange. Puts judgment on his own body. And again, you know, if you're, if you're newly saved and you're falling for the post-trib deception, um, when you hear the truth from the Word of God, you're going to flip over and say, oh, no, actually, no, the body of Christ is leaving before the Antichrist is even unleashed. But let's continue here. 
Verse 14, Moreover, all the chief of the priests and the people transgressed very much after all the abominations of the heathen. Is that true of today? People that call themselves Christians, are they transgressing after the abominations of the heathen? Sure, absolutely. They bring rock music into the churches and call it worshiping God. Rock music that comes from voodoo and witchcraft. Study, you know, history. It's where it comes from. Rock and roll. Reference to fornication in the back seat of a car, according to rock and roll themselves, the people that designed rock and roll. But we can Christianize it and bring glory to God with it. No, you can't. And polluted the house of the Lord, which he had hallowed in Jerusalem. Now, there are no church buildings that are called the house of the Lord, even in spite of some of the Baptists that try to say so. Uh, there is no holy temple or whatever else today. But still, understanding here, people take things and they say we're worshiping God with this, and it's just filled with abominations. Disgusting. Verse 15, And the Lord God of their fathers sent to them by his messengers, rising up betimes and sending, because he had compassion on his people and on his dwelling place. Do you realize how compassionate God has been to this nation and most of the other nations out there? Do you realize how long-suffering and, pa and, and patient I mean, it's just incredible what the Lord has allowed American professing Christians to get, to get away with. But look, look what they did, like what a lot of you people do to this ministry. But they mocked the messengers of God and despised his words and misused his prophets until the wrath of the Lord arose against his people till the, there was no remedy. Notice... When things fall apart, it doesn't say, and God just unfortunately was not able to stop the advance of the Illuminati or Satan's kingdom or whatever. No, it says there, the, uh, the wrath of the Lord arose against his people till there was no remedy. You know what we're facing right now in America? There's no remedy. How are you going to vote the wickedness out of this country? How are you going to bring revival? You can't. There's no remedy. A lot of people are going to die. It's gotten to that point. Just like back there with the nation of Israel. Wickedness gets to such a level where the people just say, we don't want anything to do with it. And God sends out some preachers and God sends out some people to say, hey, you need to stop it. And the people make fun. They despise their words. And they hate this book right here. And this book represents what was there, what would have been there in the Old Testament. Right? I realize it wasn't English in the Old Testament times. It was Hebrew. I understand that. But what I'm saying is the Holy Spirit powers right here in this King James Bible. And yet how many people that profess to be Christians even give any respect to this book? Even people within the supposed King James only movement, the King James Bible believing movement, they'll change it when they need to. They'll go back to the Greek. You know, They can't handle the text. They go back and they change it with the Greek. They despise God's words. What's the Lord say? Wrath is coming upon these people. I'm going to bring that wrath. He doesn't say, oh no, Satan deceived them and, and oh, oh, not, you know, just kind of bad things happened and I just kind of stood by idly and went, oh, oh, stop, stop, stop. <laughs> That's what you believe if you're a postie. That's exactly what you believe. You know, and it's so it's so interesting to me because I'll watch these post tribbers and they'll and they'll start talking about prepping or whatever else or and and, and they'll kind of smirk and they go, uh, these people out there that you know these Christians that think that we're going to get out before anything bad happens, <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> you see, to them, nothing bad is happening in their life. You see, they don't know anything about suffering for the Lord Jesus Christ. To them, it just is, oh, it, times will get bad eventually and out there in the future. They're pretty good right now, but it's going to get bad in the future. Bible-believing Christian says, it's horrible right now. I can't stand to live another day on this wicked planet. Lord, could you come back soon? I don't know how in the world you're putting up with these people out there. Boy, your wrath has got to be hitting soon. I'm feeling it. I can feel that how vexed you are. Lord, I can, I can feel it. It's just, oh, my word. Lord, what are you waiting for? It isn't, oh, we just enjoy our lives so much down here and I don't want to be persecuted, so I hope that the rapture is going to happen today because then I get to leave my wonderful life here and go to a wonderful life in heaven. That isn't it at all. And the fact that post-tribbers bring that point up proves to me that they're lost because they're not being persecuted. They're not suffering. 
They don't know anything about it. Turn to the book of Ezra. Next book over. Ezra chapter 8. Ezra chapter 8 verse 21. Down through verse 23. Then I proclaimed a fast there at the river of Ahava, that we might afflict ourselves before our God to seek of them of him a right way for us and for our little ones and for all our substance. For I was ashamed to require of the king a band of soldiers and horsemen to help us against the enemy in the way, because we had spoken unto the king, saying, The hand of our God is upon all them for good that seek him. But his power and his wrath is against all them that forsake him. His power, his wrath is against those that forsake him. What is the time that's coming again? Oh, the Great Tribulation. No, it's not called the Great Tribulation. Quit your lying. It's not called the Great Tribulation. It's not called the Tribulation. It's called the time of Jacob's trouble. It's about Israel. Why? Because they forsook Jesus Christ. They say all kinds of vile, horrible things about the Lord Jesus Christ. You know? They're wicked. Verse 23, So we fasted and besought our God for this, and he was entreated of us. Again, oh brother, I think we could bring it back. I mean, we got we got Donald Trump in the presidency, the Jesuit trained president, but we're gonna we're gonna bring America. We're gonna make America great again. We got we got good things coming in the future. You're out of your mind. You know what it would take? You know what it would take for God to bring back this country to a, a good thing? First of all, it would overthrow scripture. Okay, it just destroys Bible prophecy, th saying things get worse. Um, but if God wanted to bring, if we wanted to bring this thing back and please the Lord, it wouldn't just be some fasting and afflicting ourselves. It would be all kinds of, I mean, it, it would be war. Let's just face it, it would be war. Uh, there would be people in this country that would not submit to what the Bible says they should be doing. And it would just be war. It would be fighting. And we can't do that. Romans chapter 1. It is way beyond that. But again, these people are wicked. What happens? God brings his wrath and judgment on them. What is the time that's coming? The time of Jacob's trouble. They rejected Jesus Christ and the Lord says, Okay, I'm going to bring my wrath on you. But before he does, he catches his bride up and says, Okay, you're out of the way now, honey. Okay, now I'm going to turn back to this wicked woman named Israel. There's a lot more I can say on that too. Romans chapter 1, verse 16 through 18. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by seeing the Antichrist coming to power. Um, the just shall live by seeing the United Nations rising as a war. Uh, no, I, I'm having a hard time reading it. I guess I should... I, you know, I should have, you know, maybe take my post-trib glasses off or something. Uh, no, it says the just shall live by faith. Um, if you're a postie, how can you say that you live by faith? You don't live by faith. The Antichrist shows up, you say, oh, three and a half years. Oh, if you're a real true postie, uh, seven years. You can time out the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, can't you? Uh, then you wouldn't be living by faith, would you? No, you wouldn't. Um, you see, faith is there early on in the time of Jacob's trouble. But as it goes towards the end, you get to the judgment of the nations in Matthew chapter 25. No faith is even there. It's not even mentioned. The mystery of God's finished in the book of Revelation. I think it's chapter 10. There's no more questioning. You're not living by faith in most of the time of Jacob's trouble. Why? Because you have a play-by-play -play book right here that tells you in the book of Re Revelation, book of Daniel as well, and it, but Revelation specifically tells you exactly what's going to be happening. You can look at the seal judgments, the, the trumpet judgments, and the vile judgments, and you can see exactly what's going to happen. That's not faith. It's not faith. And yet these liars come out, these posties, they'll come out and they'll say, salvation's going to be by faith alone in the time of Jacob's, well, in the great tribulation. 
to use their own terms. You know why they're saying that? Because they're already setting people up to take the mark. Because they'll say you have eternal security, and after all, you're supposed to provide for your own. You see? Don't, I mean, don't, even, don't even argue with me, okay? I've been around you people for a long time, you post-tribbers. I've answered all your arguments, and I've come out with things that none of you posties can answer. Not one of you. And I didn't get it from Schofield or from Larkin or from Ruckman. So don't even tell me that either. Lord has shown me some things from this book. Verse 18. Romans chapter 1, verse 18. For the wrath of God, not the power of Satan, not the Illuminati taking over, the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Compare that with 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Yeah. Romans chapter 2, verse 1. Therefore thou art an inexcusable, O man, whosoever thou art that judgest, for wherein thou judgest another, thou condemnest thyself, for thou that judgest doest the same things. You know, most post-tribbers I've met uh, are, you know, they'll watch occasional movies. They'll refer, to, I've even heard some of these posty pastors, they'll actually refer to movies in their sermons. You know, have you, have you, seen, the, have you seen the Terminator 2 movie? Yeah, remember that one scene? And, and I'm thinking, uh, doesn't that stuff vex you? Aren't you bothered by hearing profanity? Oh, that's right, they aren't. You know, these posties, I'll put profanity in the comment section. I have to delete them and block them and things like this. I try to keep my comment section as clean as I can, and I can continually have to kick posties out. Why? Because they're lost. <laughs> but they'll, they'll judge, you know, oh, look at the sodomites out there, these wicked perverts, you know, and they'll say all these things and whatever else and rant and rave about the, the queers and all these other names that they give these people. And yet they'll go and they'll watch Hollywood movies. And they'll go and they'll patronize, you know, places that are friendly to sodomites and whatever else. And you get Steven Anderson, his filmmaker, works for Hollywood. Paul Wittenberger worked on a, a lesbian film. <laughs> Stinking hypocrites is what they are. Condemned in Romans chapter 2, verse 1. Verse 2. But we are sure that the judgment of God is according to truth against them which commit such things. Uh, I, the judgment of God is, is according to truth against them which commit such things? No, 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 no. The judgment of God is against the body of Christ as well as the wicked. Because we're all going into the Great Tribulation. So you got a warped system there. I mean, Abraham comes before the Lord. The Lord's going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. And he says, shall not the judge of all the earth do right? You're going to kill all of them in there? Hey, lots in there. What are you killing him for? But uh, that's that was there. But now today with the body of Christ, God's going to put the body of Christ into his judgment and wrath. I really do hope you get saved. You know? I hope that uh, the sarcasm that I do in these videos shakes you enough that you make makes you realize and drop your self-righteous pride enough to realize, hey, you know what? I don't think my, my understanding of salvation is where it needs to be here. You know? Uh, maybe I'm serving a different God. He'll save me from eternal hell, but he won't save me from hell on the earth that he himself pours out. The fourth seal, in other words. Death and hell. Verse 3. And thinkest thou this, O man, that judgest them which do such things and doest the same, that thou shalt escape the judgment of God? Talking of false converts. Or despisest thou the riches of his goodness and forbearance and long suffering, not knowing that not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance? Hmm. I could go off on that one, but we'll just continue on here. <laughs> A lot of these posties they, they don't like the idea of biblical repentance too. Kind of interesting. Verse 5, But after thy hardness and impenitent heart treasurest up unto thyself wrath against the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God. These false converts are going to go into that time of wrath and judgment of Almighty God. Their impenitent heart. They're not sorry for what they've done. They're not saying, I'm a sinner. God, I'm sorry. 
sorry that you had to die on the cross, such a horrible death to pay for such a vile wretch like me. Nope. Hey, just believe. Just pray the magic little prayer. One, two, three, repeat after me. No repentance. See? Verse 6, who will render to every man according to his deeds, to them who by patient continuance in well-doing seek for glory and honor and immortality, eternal life. But unto them that are contentious and do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, indignation and wrath, tribulation and anguish upon every soul of man that doeth evil, of the Jew first and also of the Gentile. But glory, honor and peace to every man that worketh good, to the Jew first, first and also to the Gentile. For there is no respect of persons with God. Okay? Right now, that's true. In the time of Jacob's trouble, that verse isn't true. There is respect of persons with God. God says in Revelation chapter 7, Hurt not the earth, neither the trees nor the sea, you know, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. Why the favoritism? Oh, because God's going back to the nation of Israel to deal with them again. You see? The times of the Gentiles are being fulfilled. The transgressors are coming to the full. See, posties, I, I, every postie I've ever met is non-dispensational. I've never met a dispensational post-river, okay? Somebody believes that we're going to go through the time there. Because you can't be, right? You realize eternal security for a member of the body of Christ today, we're sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. But Revelation chapter 14, verses 9 through 12 says, If any man takes the mark, any man takes the mark, worships the beast and his image, he gets God's wrath. And so what the postie tries to do is they say, Ugh, yeah, I can't get around that wrath thing. So um, we'll just say that the first half of the Great Tribulation, no such word exists, and no such wording exists as a title in the King James Bible. We'll go through the first part of the Great Tribulation. And that's, that's what man does to Christians. And the last half is what God does to man. Ooh, that sounds good. Not a verse of scripture to back it up. But you just use your little cliches and things, and then the other lost people think that you're super spiritual. When well, you're not. <laughs> not even saved. If you're a posty, hardcore militant posty. I'm defining it. <laughs> Matthew chapter 10. Matthew chapter 10. You say, well, it used the words tribulation and, and, and you know, Wrath there and as, as sort of the same thing there in Romans chapter 2. Yeah, it did. And it was upon wicked people. Okay? Hypocrites. <laughs> Matthew chapter 10, verse 24. Let's start there. The disciple is not above his master, nor the servant above his Lord. It is enough for the disciple that he be as his master and the servant as his Lord. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebub, how much more shall they call them of his household? You know how many times I've been accused of being possessed with devils and, and you're a servant of, of hell? I actually had somebody call me the one time in the comments. They called me the angel of light. <laughs> the, okay. You know, so I'm, I'm apparently Lucifer now. You know. Okay. Well, they did the same thing to Jesus. You know. You're Beelzebub. Prince of the devils. Verse 26. Fear them not, therefore, for there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed and hid that shall not be known. And that's the whole thing. These people, I'm telling you right now, posties, their whole Christianity thing is a cloak for sin, especially the Baptists. Uh, posty Baptists are some of the most wicked devils out there. I've been around them. You know, they'll, they'll get on camera and when they're in church, they act completely different than when they're out. When they're out, they'll cuss, they'll tell dirty jokes, they're wicked. They'll, they're womanizers. They'll, a lot of times they get into pedophilia or whatever else, or sodomy or things. Just violent, vile people. I've met them. I've met them. That's what these posties are. But you see, um, it's going to be revealed. They're covering things up. They have that little cloak for their sin, their little Christian thing. But it's going to be revealed. You say, when? Um, when those of us that are genuinely saved here come up hither... And we go up, and they stay down. Bye-bye. Verse 27, What I tell you in darkness, that speak ye in light. And what ye hear in the ear, that preach ye upon the housetops. 
And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Huh. And yet that's not what posties do. Hey, post tribber, are you going into the time of Jacob's trouble because of God putting you in there? Or because Satan is taking over? And the Antichrist is rising and you'll see the Antichrist and it's going to be a one world government. You're going to have to go out and boldly fight against the forces of the Antichrist. You see? Who do you fear? You fear the Antichrist and his system. Yeah, you absolutely do. That's why a lot of these post-tribbers, by the way, are also very much pro-Donald Trump or pro-Republican Party because they think they can kind of put off that Antichrist system. Verse 29, Are not two sparrows sold, sparrows sold for a farthing? And one of them shall not fall on the ground without your father? But the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear ye not, therefore, ye are of more value than many sparrows. Whosoever therefore shall confess me before men, him will I confess also before my Father which is in heaven. And whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before my Father which is in heaven. Think not that I am come to send peace on earth. I came not to send peace, but a sword. Spoken by Jesus Christ. No, Jesus, I'm sorry, you're confused. Um, you see, because... Things are going to happen here. There's going to be an EMP attack or an economic collapse, and, and, um, and out of it is going to emerge the new world order, and we're going to lose our rights, and we're going to lose our Second Amendment rights, and, and then there's going to be the implantable microchip, and we're all going to be forced to take it, and <clears throat> a lot of Christians are going to be beheaded at that time, point in time, and, and uh, the, the power of Satan is going to rise, and, and there's nothing we can do about it. It's just right there. Or you can actually believe like a Bible-believing Christian and say, you know what, I fear God. And I'm going to serve Him. And I know what the Lord's Spirit is right now. And that Spirit is, He's grieved. He's looking down on this world right now and He's just... You see there in the book of Revelation at one point in time, John says about the space of half an hour, the Lord just angry. Smoke coming out of the temple and everybody's just kind of standing there quiet. Mm-hmm. You know, there's times I get angry, and uh, I've seen my son, and he'll just, he knows, now's not the time to talk, okay? Um, d you know, I did something really bad, and Dad is really, really angry right now, and he just kind of, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and uh, I can't imagine being a perfect, holy, righteous God and understanding everything. The eyes of the Lord are in every place, beholding the evil and the good. The Lord knows our thoughts, secret thoughts of every man and woman, and little child. He sees what's going on. I can't fathom how angry he must be right now and how much his judgment is going to come down on this earth. And there's no remedy. There's no, okay, okay, break it up, break it up, break it up. Referee comes in, steps in between God and, and this world and says, stop, stop. Okay, you've gone too far. Seven years of the Lord just vengeance, wrath, judgment on his bride because she needs to be purified. <laughs> uh, no, on a wicked, Christ-rejecting world and specifically on the Jews. I love the Jewish people. I love the nation of Israel. I support their right to be in that land over there, but they're wicked. They're extremely wicked. If a Jew dies today, they go to hell and they burn just like any other old wretched sinner out there. God's no respecter of persons right now. He'll save Jew and Gentile and say you're a Christian. You don't get some special privilege. You might have an advantage because you've been raised if you know in the whole Torah system and whatever else. You might have some advantages as, as a Jew. Uh, Romans chapter 3, I think, talks about that. But when it comes to salvation, you got to be a, a dirty sinner just like a Gentile has to be a dirty sinner. You want to come to Jesus Christ for salvation? Okay, then you get down in the hog pen and the mud and the mire and everything else and you come to Jesus Christ broken, just like a Gentile. But in the time of Jacob's trouble, uh-uh, things change. Now the Lord starts to show some favoritism towards those Jewish people. 
And he sends them the two witnesses, Moses and Elijah, to come back and preach to them and give them signs and wonders. Why does the church need signs and wonders? We don't. But the Jews require a sign. There's so much Scripture. So many verses of Scripture that no postie can answer. And yet they pridefully just keep coming out and we're going through it. We're going into it. The Antichrist is rising. The New World Order is coming. The power of Satan is rising. And we're going to be victims of it. Or you can look at it and say, as a Christian, as a Bible-believing Christian, you get saved as a postie and you say, you know what, I can see the wrath of God is coming. And I know that I'm not appointed to wrath. I'm not appointed to judgment from Him. And I'm going to see the day when I get to hear my name called and I get to go up. You know, I spoke early about, uh, earlier about my son and things and he'll get bad sometimes and whatever. But you know what? If I know my son is in some place and I see some wickedness there, why in the world would I pour out judgment and wrath on that wicked place while my son is in there? Or how about my wife? My wife is in some store or whatever else and I see some things going down in there or whatever else. Some guy's trying to rob the store and I just take a fully automatic rifle. Don't have one, but I'm trying to prove a point here. And I just... Like that and just... just I'll just kill everybody in the whole store. You know? Well, your wife's in there. Yeah, I know, but she kind of needs to be purified. You say, well, yeah, of course you wouldn't do that. But God would. God looks down at this world and he sees all this wickedness and everything else and there's a Christian that's standing for me. There's a Christian that believes in this King James Bible and it's not going not gonna to compromise and go use a new version that comes from the Vatican. There's a Christian that's listening to the right kind of music. There's a Christian that's vexed by the filthy conversation of the wicked. There's a Christian that don't, doesn't go to the movies. There's a Christian that's trying to live for me and that their relatives you know, cuss them out and yell at them and say, get out of here and whatever else, and they're suffering for me. But that suffering's not enough. I'm going to make them suffer a little bit more. I'm going to shoot the machine gun into the world down there and I'm just going to, well, I, I hit a few people, you know, friendly fire. Sorry about that. Too bad. Oops. That's why I say post tribbers are lost. And if you're genuinely saved, if you have been born again and you are currently in the post trib system of, of deception, you hear a sermon like this, you listen to some of the other preaching that I've done on this issue, and there's others out there you can be convinced of them too. You know, it's not just me. But you listen to that, you're going to convert like that. You're going to say, Lord, I'm sorry. We've all been deceived about things. You know, nobody arrives at truth, absolute truth, the, the second that you get saved and you never get deceived after that. Absolute truth is Jesus Christ. But he will lead you in that process of sanctification. And he'll clean things up. But you get somebody that says, well, I used to be pre-trib. I was saved back then and, and whatever else. And I used to be pre-trib, but now I'm a post-tribber. Now, I understand we're not going through it. We're not going to escape. These people think they're going to, and they start to mock. You're looking at somebody who's lost. And actually, as I said in other studies, they're actually telling the truth. Because they are not going to be going up at the rapture, at the catching up, whatever you want to call it. Um, they're not going up. They're staying down. They are going into that time period. Just like any other lost person. So, <clears throat> uh, if you have questions, I mean, you, you know, put the questions down in the comments, and I'm just going to spend all my time, you know, getting to, around to these comments. And, or you can actually spend some time and watch the sermons. You know, when I first got saved, I was just so hungry for just listening to preaching and teaching from the Word of God, and I, I just. I listened to a lot of false prophets early on because I was just I was so anxious to hear about God's word and what God's word says. Just give me truth. I just want truth. And for the last, you know, eleven years now, um, the Lord has been helping me to bring out studies and truth here on YouTube for free. All my doctrinal stuff is on here, as far as all the pre-trib stuff. Scripture after Scripture after Scripture refuting the arguments of the post-tribbers. Not one of their arguments. I've never, I've never missed on one of their arguments. You know, that is, I mean, if you want to know the primary purpose of my ministry, it's this issue. So, I do pray that you'll, you'll think about these things. Um, if you're just 
playing around and messing around as a post tribber saying, well, I don't think we can really know for sure. Uh, yes, you can. That's like saying, I don't really know for sure that I can be saved. I don't really know for sure I'm going to go to heaven when I die. Um, well, then you have some real problems. All right. Uh, you get in this book as a saved man or woman, and God will show you the truth that we are leaving. The body of Christ is leaving before his judgment comes because his judgment and his wrath is reserved for the nation of Israel and all those nations that come against it. God's going to make a full end of all the nations except for Israel. So that is going to be it. And I do pray that you will think about these things, pray about these things, and uh, we'll see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.